Hey Aliupa and welcome to my big Swedish adventure. I'm riding the length of Sweden from north to south. In the previous episode, the sun finally came out and it made all the difference in the world. So glorious and my new friend bike touring Mikkel showed up. Let's go have some fun. Good morning, good morning. Check this out. It is so sunny, it's like a Colorado morning. Except I'm not excited for all these guys waiting for me. Look at them all. They're just hanging out under my rain fly. But I think I'm getting the hang of this time zone. I think. I woke up today full brightness like it is right now and I was like, oh, it's like seven or eight in the morning. I go outside, look at my watch and it was three. <laughs> But then I went back to bed and, oh, slept a few more hours. Now that is a forecast that makes me happy. That was my first tent shake of the trip. Good morning, Mikke. Good morning. All bra med dig? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So du gott? Uh, the latter part of the, of the night, anyway. Yeah. It's always kind of difficult in the beginning, especially when you're out and you've been cycling for 10 hours, it's no problem getting to sleep at the first night when you're not yeah. exhausted by That's true. Cycling. Well, we'll change that tonight. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I'm gonna celebrate the morning sunshine with a little shave. Mm -mm -mm. Is it always buggy all summer like this? Uh, no, like, yeah. Ryan calculated this perfectly. So, so midsummer when he arrived here is kind of peak mosquito season. <laughs> <laughs> Good for me! Yay! So if you come here in say August, there, like during the day, there aren't any mosquitoes, and sort of maybe ten percent of what you have not right now in the evening. So wow, Sweden is uh, best <laughs> in in August, late summer. Oh man! Oh yeah, you know what it's time for. What do you eat in the morning? I uh, mainly just eat porridge and <laughs> boring stuff like that. <laughs> oh, that is boring. Come I, on, I, man. I Have save the chocolate for later in the day. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't chocolate. No, this no, is no. this is health food, man. <laughs> Peanut butter and hazelnut. You're missing out, ma'am. Mm -mm. Havre. Yes, havre grönsgröt. <laughs> havre grönsgröt. Oatmeal. So Mike here, his name's not really Mike, it's Mike. <laughs> yeah. That's how you say it in Swedish. But we were just talking, we both graduated from high school the same year in Sweden, 1998. Hello! Woo! Should we sing the graduation song? There's a graduation song that everybody sings in Swedish. I want to know the first line. I think Ryan's better. <laughs> it's probably one of the songs he has memorized since. <laughs> That's true. I definitely have. Låt om fröres i ungdomens vår En klapp i hjärta med friska slag My Swedish sister Sofia made sure that I learned that. Here is another Swedish vocabulary word for you. Migga. That is mosquito. That's how you say it. And many mosquitoes is migor. And this is his bug juice. Does stuff work well? Yeah, hopefully. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Thank you, super soft Swedish grass and a picnic table and a cute little town park. We've got Mike checking out some maps. He knows this area. This is his backyard, right? Sort of. Anyway, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, my friend, here we go. No crashies, no, no flatties, no whammies. No whammies. It feels like a Colorado morning out here. Blue skies, sun, warmth, and it's by far my earliest start of the trip. Just before 8 a.m., which isn't that early, but I've been going to sleep late. Look 
that we found right off the side of the road. It's one of Santa's reindeer. Hey, buddy. When when the reindeer are shaking, that, that, it's not like they have like spasms or just want, they just want to get off all the midges from from their body. Oh yeah, they hate the bugs yeah. too. I get it. We are riding along a nice, calm country road. Not much traffic. And we're just chatting and getting to know each other. Mikkel here is a uh, ice hockey ref in the winter. Yeah. How'd you get into that? Yeah, I was uh, playing ice hockey until I uh, entered high school and then I realized I was too bad at it. So I <laughs> kind of started refing and I'm, I'm usually <laughs> People boo at me on the on the in the stands. I'm probably as bad as a ref as I was a hockey player. <laughs> Good morning, reindeer. I can't believe it. <laughs> this is the first time in my life I've ever ridden behind a herd of reindeer. Now go on, get back to Santa, he's waiting for you. Wow, that was pretty special, man. Yeah. Does, that, does that happen a lot here? Yeah, sometimes, but like, sometimes you don't, you see maybe one or two reindeer, but yeah, that's quite <laughs> uncommon. Mm -hmm. You get a hundred on, on the road like that. Yeah. I am absolutely in love with the look of Swedish summer houses, the red with the white trim. And there's a reason for that, right? Yeah. Like back in the day, paint cost a lot of money and uh, we have a lot of copper in the ground here in Sweden. So when, when the mining companies had their uh, mining operations, they got a lot of uh, rest products. So they used the rest products to make this red, red paint called Falu Red Färg and you can see this all over Sweden. Yeah. So basically back in the 70s or 80s maybe 80% 80 of all the houses were painted like this in Sweden. Now it's a bit less but still every other house is red in Sweden. It's the classic look. Yeah. Yeah I love it and so it's just a byproduct of the the mining operation huh? Yeah. Yeah, I just told Ryan that uh, you could probably get one of those houses for about $10,000 or so. They're really cheap around here. In Is that the only Northern thing that's Sweden. cheap in Sweden? <laughs> $10,000 for a Swedish summer house. I'll take one! But I guess then you have to live in the middle of nowhere and you're far away from everything and they're pretty simple and a lot of times they don't have plumbing, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no services around or... You get, you have to uh, be car dependent, that's the bad thing. Yeah. is taking me to a little shelter here along the river and there's shelters like this all over Sweden. Pretty cool. So this is a simple Swedish shelter. How does this system work? Yeah, the, these shelters are mainly provided by the Swedish state or the municipality around here. So often you can find free firewood to use. They, they restock these shelters a couple of times each summer. So, mm -hmm. and uh, there's no fee for using these places. You, it's just based on a first come first serve principle, basically. Wow, and you can you sleep under here if you wanted to? Yeah, but then you have to <laughs> fight the mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, so but, they, they usually have a shelter from the, the rain and then you can build a fire maybe, fire pit, picnic tables. Yeah, and they even have even have like small huts as well in some places. And how many are these? Are, are um, there? They're in Sweden. I don't think anyone knows how many there are, but there's a site called uh, map.campwild or something uh, that 
lists most of these, but they only list about 20% or so. So you're gonna stumble upon these kind of shelters. So of, there's thousands of, yeah, probably. Probably tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. I love Sweden taking care of their people. So with the Allemansrätten, you can camp here, right? You can stay wherever you want pretty much in Sweden. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, if you stay about a hundred meters away from the nearest uh, house, you're you're pretty fine. And if you only stay for one night, but us cyclists were basically moving on each day. So, so it's perfect for us in that way. Yeah. And these are all free because of the high Swedish taxes, right? Yeah. <laughs> The thing in Sweden has always been that the, the government want to inspire people to get out in the nature and that's why they built things like these. Just to, to make it a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, and easy. All right, goodbye Swedish shelter. Thank you. We are off into the woods, into the skogen. That means woods. We are back on dirt roads on the divide route right now, the Euro divide. We're gonna follow this for a bit and just just have ourselves a lovely day, right? Yeah, the weather's <laughs> great and uh, yeah, perfect riding conditions, not too slippery. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say We'll do that again, I almost crashed. So what do we have in front of us? Yeah, we have about uh, five or 10 kilometers before we reach the dam over here that we're gonna follow for the next 10 kilometers or so. So it should be pretty smooth sailing ahead of us here. And perfect weather. Yep. It's probably like 70 degrees. This would be a nice cool spring day in Boulder. Today is one of those days where you just gotta keep stopping because it's so beautiful. Vi är glada. We are happy. Those were some of the most painful drone shots I've ever gotten. You wanna know why? Horse flies. They are on us like crazy out here. You might see them flying after us. They can actually follow you at pretty high speed. How do you deal with horse flies? Uh, the, the trick is to not stop that often. <laughs> but uh, another interesting thing about the horse flies is that, that they don't uh, sting you, instead they take a small piece of your skin with them when they, they go away so it's really painful yeah it's not very fun but I hope those drone shots were worth it So today I'm having a pain that I've never had and it's something that most of my cycling friends have had and that's knee pain and I've luckily never had that but today my right knee hurts really bad and I think it's because I'm using SPD clip-in pedals which I haven't used in well over a year. I've been using more of the platform style pedals because most of my riding is technical and I'm on and off my bike constantly. But I thought, okay, Sweden, this is gonna be a lot of smooth gravel. I wanna crank. And I don't know, maybe my foot's just stuck in a position it doesn't like. And I've been trying to mess with some things. Changing the cleats, changing the cleat, uh, 
position. We'll see. Here it is, my friends. My first black bean Swedish burrito. And check it out. We found this awesome shelter right next to a creek, just in time for lunch. And there's a trick I'm learning about eating anything on the roads or in the woods in Sweden. You kind of like eat, take a bite, and you dance around a little bit because there's either mosquitoes or horse flies on you and you gotta keep moving at all times. <laughs> it's kind of fun, you do the lunch dance, snack dance. What did you make for lunch? I think I have some uh, pasta carbonara or something. Pasta carbonara, that is fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Magical Swedish river water. And what I use to filter is a Steri pen. You just dip it in for about 45 seconds to a minute and the light just kind of zaps all of the potential bacteria so I don't get Swedish diarrhea. And some of the shelters even have an outhouse, which is pretty cool. You know, it's, it's basic, but it does the job. It's a composting toilet in there. Hur är läget mycket? Det är bra. Det är lite what we in Sweden say paltkoma after after <laughs> lunch. That's the expression for when you're feeling a bit tired after <laughs> yeah. having a nice lunch. So as we're riding along this road, I can hear a lot of noise on my right hand side. And Mika said there's some big rapids in this river and he is right. This is amazing. Look at that. And of course there's a cozy spot to have a picnic and grill right next to this beauty. It's really cool to see stuff like this because when I lived down south in Sweden, I never saw rivers with rapids like this. Nope, not at all. This reminds me a little bit of like Colorado. So what's the name of this river? Where's all the water coming from? Yeah, the, the water is mainly coming off the mountains here and uh, the river is called the Vindel River and that's one of the four un, uh, unaffected rivers here in Sweden. That oh, so have... no dams. Yeah, exactly. So this river is basically wild all the way down to the coast. So we're at another rest stop here looking at a map. Where you live, bud? It's close, huh? Yeah, I live right here by the coast in a town called Skellefteå. So I mainly, yesterday I just took the bus up almost all the way up to Arvidsjärn. We stayed here in a little village called Abotresk. And today we've been making our way through these roads down and we're now about here along the Vindel River and we're aiming to go to Lyxele later on this evening. Right on. And this word here, tresk, means swamp, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of these. Tresk, tresk, there's so much swamp, tresk. I have a random question I just thought of. Before I came here, people warned me about bears. Yeah. Is that something to be scared of here? Uh, that's a typical question for me living in Sweden and and uh, like I told Ryan, I have never seen a bear like out in nature during my whole life. And in Sweden we have about 3,000 brown bears and if you compare that to Canada I think they have over 300,000 so there are really not that many bears here in Sweden. And, and most hopefully are pretty friendly. <laughs> yeah, they're like super kind Swedish bears. They invite you in for some honey. <laughs> kind of like this guy named Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. All right, the rain's gone, the sun is out, we're riding in the town to get some food, and check it out. Ole, 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 ole. Do 
you see this? This is a veggie burger, and I'm so excited to eat it. And I got a bucket of fries, a milkshake. Mike's got a burger, fries, milkshake. We are happy. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Skål! Skål is how you say cheers in Swedish. Mm. Food tastes so good after a long ride. We went like 95 miles. Here's something you don't see at every fast food restaurant, a milk machine. You just fill right on up. You know what I like about camping in grass? You can go bare feet. It's nice and soft. Oh man, could it get any better? The answer is no. The sun just broke out of the clouds. I just took a shower. I'm feeling good. This campground is great. I would equate this campground to something we have in the United States called KOA. They have cabins. They have RV spots, they have all sorts of fun activities and mini golf and stuff for the kids. And I'm just really thankful that they have grass. I love camping on grass because it's so soft. You barely need your air mattress. So here we are having our little campfire talk around the non-existent campfire, which is A-OK. -okay. <laughs> Some of the best conversations happen at camp. And we've been getting to know each other all day. That's what you do on a bike tour. It's one of the great things. You just ride side by side and chat. And he was telling me about how he doesn't drive all that often, which is great because I never do. And you ride your bike to work long distances and all sorts of stuff, right? Yeah, I usually take, take my bike to work from like the beginning of March until October. That's kind of the the warm period up where I live where we don't have these crazy winter temperatures. So I have about uh, 17 kilometers or 10 miles to work each way. Yeah. Uh, but I have a pretty nice commute to work. Most most of the stretch to work is uh, on cycle paths. So I don't have to go on these larger roads or no, no like traffic lights Good. my whole commute. How did you so, get inspired to ride a bike? I've basically been doing it all my life. I, I, I grew up taking my bike to, to school and, and uh, I never owned a car until I was maybe 30 or so. So I've been basically cycling all throughout my life. You know? And what about bike adventures? How long have you been bike touring? Mm, sort of like 10 years, but the first year or so I only went on more organized tours with like a uh, a company that yeah, a guy that yeah and what do you love most about it yeah just getting out in nature and and, and just uh, getting away away from from all the the bus around town and yeah. so on and what's the goal with your YouTube channel I don't know just maybe showcasing this part of, of Europe that uh, few people ever get to visit Kind of different than than say Germany and France and so on. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, people always think that the Scandinavian countries are pretty expensive to go to, and we do have <laughs> high prices on on food and so on. But but often now we're staying in a campground, but I mean you can might as well just stay out in the forest for free. So your bike tour here don't have to be that expensive if you. Yeah. If you and what's your favorite American hockey team? Uh, it's the Colorado Avalanche, yeah, just I say to, it. I have to say the Avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> in the late 90s, we had Peter Forsberg, Peter Fopa. Forsberg, Fopa, <laughs> national hero here in Sweden, and he helped us win a Stanley Cup. So when I was an exchange student... Two, actually. Yeah, that's right, I two. I think it was injured the last... Yeah, the that's last right. <laughs> so when I was an exchange student here, I was so excited because I had been following Peter Forsberg, and now we're in the land of hockey players and you're a hockey ref in your spare time right yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you have a you have a full-time job you have a family you have kids yeah and you find time for riding your bike how do you do that yeah i have a pretty understanding wife i, I guess <laughs> and uh and my uh, i have three kids and two of them are are kind of grown up by now so mm. so that gives me more time to go out on these adventures and how many weeks of vacation a year do you get uh, we get about five or, or six, depending on, on different circumstances. But usually during the summer we get four four weeks off, and then I take maybe a week in the in the fall and go go to 
a more warmer country than Sweden is in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Oh, it's fun. What a great day we had, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so much fun out there. And it's been great to have a local tour guide. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Okay, let's uh, fall asleep. No, that's not going to happen because it's so <laughs> bright. <laughs> We're just going to sit here and talk some more. Hello there, and thank you for making it to the very end of this video. You get a high five. I am here to say, hey, thank you for watching my videos, but also, if my videos bring value to your life, if you love them with all your heart and soul, or even just a little bit of your heart and soul, please consider joining my Patreon. You will help keep this channel alive, but you will also get stuff. You will get early release videos with no ads, which is very cool, and I sometimes do Zoom calls with my patrons. You will have direct access to me through Patreon to ask me any question you want, and like I said, you're keeping this channel alive. And also, hey, I wrote a book. It's called The Long Way Home. It's about my very first adventure from Honduras to Colorado, and it talks a lot about how it inspired me to live an interesting life, to say the least. My mom loves it, so maybe you'll love it too. I will link all this down below. But more than anything, thank you so much for watching my videos. You are awesome. Now it's time for you to get off that couch and get out there. <laughs>